I am excited about what God is doing in our hearts and our lives. Are you excited? Do you feel that God is doing a new thing in your heart and in your soul? It's a new season. So I'm just, we're walking in that. And I'm so excited about our word today. I'm excited about what God wants to speak into our hearts. I'm just going to uh, open it. We're just going to start with, my, with the title. The subject of what I want to talk to you today is called The Power of the power of a holy no. The power of a holy no. I want you to sit with that for a minute. It took me a long time to figure out the word no. I'm, I'm going to be celebrating a birthday this week. Thank you, thank you. Child, I'm turning 52, child. Yes. Yes, Lord. If it had not been. So as I, in, my, in, my, in my maturing year, matter of the, and the senior saints keep moving the, the uh, senior ministry higher. I don't know how I don't get in. But every time I think I'm close to being in, they keep up in the ante. I'm going to write a strongly worded petition to be in the seniors group. Anyhow. It took me a long time of maturing and, and a long time of living to finally figure out that the word no is actually a complete sentence. Has anyone else discovered this? Are you still looking to discover this, that when you say no, it doesn't necessarily need an explanation attached to it? that it doesn't need to be uh, followed by a bunch of excuses or something that you just got to make up on the fly because you don't want somebody to feel bad. And that no is actually a complete sentence, period, point blank. That's the end of discussion. But there's still one group it's hard to say no to, I got I to gotta admit. Whenever I go to the grocery store, I still have a hard time saying no to the little kids who be outside selling for their little football teams. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a real team. I, it, the, the candy bars be like four dollars. I'd be like, it's just I could go in the store and just get a. Uh, all right. It's still hard to say no to them. I will admit because even if it's not for your little team, I appreciate that you're out here trying to hustle. It's when you could be doing a whole lot of other things. But other than that. I think I've, I'm, I'm figuring out the word no. And uh, now that I have a grandson, I'm learning from my little toddler, my little toddler. You know, kids have this down packed, especially toddlers. They know it means no. And they mean it with all their heart and with all their soul and all their chest. They, 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 this is when we can learn from a child that no is no. I'm learning no. I'm learning that no is actually a boundary. No, no puts parameters around your, your day, around your intentions, around your calendar. No is what helps people not intrude on your boundaries. No is not is where you're able just to walk in a freedom. I mean, no, no gives you a freedom. Because when you don't have a boundary, when you don't have a no, it's easy to be manipulated. It's easy to be controlled when you don't have boundaries. And have you noticed in your life that everybody wants your yes? Seems like yes is a hot commodity. Everybody wants your yes. Your family wants your yes. Your kids want your yes. Your job wants your yes. Your personal life, your relationship. Everybody is after your yes. And if you are just one person, tell me, how do you dispense all your yeses? And how are you drawing boundaries around your no's? Us living in this culture, we know that the world, the systems, they want to conform us. They want to control us. They want to uh, you know, make us have these ideologies through marketing. They tell you that your life is incomplete unless you have this product. Them IG, ooh, Lord, if I don't stop shopping on these IG things, they got every, they know they got me. They put everything in my time. I'm like, yes, I need it. Right? Marketing and the culture and the music tells us how to love and who to love and what to do on our free time. 
It's all in an effort to mold us, to make us fit into their mold. And they want us to consume everything they offer and anything they put out. They want it to be an automatic yes. Yes, I'm learning the word no, just like life. It's more like a buffet. Remember when buffets used to be the thing? I'm, I'm, I'm glad that era is over. Because if I go to one, more, one more hometown buffet, I can't even walk in no more. I'm, I'm done. One more golden corral, I can't do it. But, you know, life is a little like those buffets. Even though everything has been put out for you to eat, you don't have to consume everything. You can pick and choose what you want to consume. You get to pick and choose whether or not you're going to overindulge or whether you're just going to go to the salad bar. That same mentality is what we need to have in our lives because it's not good to be just a yes person all the time. You don't want to be the yes man, the yes woman, the wing person. It's not good for us to have a perpetual yes to all things. How many people have discovered this in your life? You handed out way too many yeses, and now you looking like you flaky because you didn't, yeah. We got we to gotta control our no's. But what the no, there are times in our lives where we actually really do need to say no. Come on, let's practice it right now. Say no. no. Okay, okay. I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. But there's different types of no's. Y'all, y'all, there's just some kinds of no's. There's a, there's a lazy no. Like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not going to do it because I don't, I'm just lazy. There's an um, insubordinate no. So don't, look, after this sermon, don't go to your job talking about I got a power of a holy no. And then talking about Sebastian Tanisha told me I can say no, 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 no. Yo, you, at, at your job site, you actually have to do what's in your job description. So we don't want an insubordinate no. Now, you can have control. If that's not in my job description, I'm going to have to say no. But don't y'all get fired this week. That's the, the, the whole thing. There's an insubordinate no. There's a mean no. There's a no you just saying no just because you're saying no just because you just, you want to say no. There's a spiteful no. There's a revenge no. There's all types of no's in all types of category, but what we're talking about today is a holy no. There's a holy no. That's another category. You know, the word holy means that to be altogether other, to be separate, to be different, to be in another category. This no that I'm talking about will lead us to freedom, will lead us to life, to lead us to purpose. It's a holy no. It doesn't have strings attached. It doesn't come with guilt. It doesn't come with shame. It's a holy no. Somebody say holy no. Yes, that sounds good. In our passage today, I want to introduce you to four women. Four women who saved the day with a holy no. Yes, Siri, that's right. We, when we're talking about women in the Bible, you know, we don't have to wait till Mother's Day, amen. We don't have to wait till Ladies Sunday. We don't have to wait till Ladies Luncheon to talk about women who are in the Bible. And in this passage, we have four heroic women who should be viewed as Bible heroes. We usually save that for David or Abraham. Or, no, there are women in the Bible. Let me hear you ladies, yeah. There's women in the Bible who we can learn from, we can look up to, we can pattern our lives uh, uh, according to. So we see in this passage, it's going to be Exodus 1. We see four women who are leading a holy rebellion against empire. Four women. Four women who without whom we wouldn't even know who Moses was right now. Four women who the children of Israel would have never been rescued if it had not been for these four women. And they just take up one one chapter and a little half chapter of another, but they are so important that we talk about them in the context of a holy no. So when we get to Exodus 1, 
Exodus first chapter. I'm going to give you a little context. As we land into the scripture, we find that there's a new Pharaoh in town, and he doesn't know anything about Joseph. Joseph had already brought the children of Israel there. They found refuge. They were growing. They were increasing. They were multiplying. A new Pharaoh came and be like, look, these people about to take over. We, got, we need a plan. I know what we'll do. We'll make their labor hard. We'll oppress them. We'll make them make uh, bricks out of nothing. We just gonna, they, we're just going to, it's going to be terrible for them. And then hopefully they'll begin to crumble. Maybe they'll just deplete. Maybe they, sounds a little, a little familiar. Seems like history tends to repeat itself. But they said, you know, let's just, let's just be real hard on them. And then maybe they'll go away. But it, it, it flipped on them. They actually began to increase even the more. And so we pick up in our passage, Exodus 1.15. Y'all there, Exodus 1.15. The first people I want to talk about are the, these women called the midwives. It says, the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them. But they let the boys live. Come on, somebody say, let the boys live. Ooh, that's a whole protest sign right there. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwife said to, the, to Pharaoh, oh, it's because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women, for they are vigorous when they give birth before the midwife comes to them. Could be... True, not true, could be, you know. Verse 20 said, so God dealt with the midwives and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. Ooh, that's a deep, that's a, that's, a, that's a tough one to sit on. That's a tough one to sit on. But look at these midwives. Women leading a holy rebellion. Women who had a holy no in their pocket because they, number one, they fear God. When we say the fear of God, we're not talking about like you're walking around hoping that a, a lightning bolt doesn't strike you at any time, any time you do something wrong. No, the fear of God is conversely is a, having an awareness of God that God is with me all the time, sees everything that I'm doing, and I love God so much that I don't want to do anything to hurt God or to, to do something to displease God. That is a holy fear. And I feel like that's something that's missing in our culture, just having an awareness of God that I don't want to do this because I know God is real. Y'all yeah. talk about karma. Forget karma. God is real. A holy fear of God. They respected the dignity of human life, that, that the image of God actually shows up in people. That the image of God is actually, uh, when we see people walking around, that they are actually exemplifying who God is. They didn't see people as disposable. Say that. Say that. Like so many see our young black boys. Yeah. Just disposable. We hear the news, we'd be like, oh, well, another thing happened in East Oakland. Another thing in Richmond. It just becomes static in our mind. But are we really leaning into these, the, the way these midwives saw life? Are we really leaning into people are not disposable? We're not going to throw our babies away. We're not going to throw our young men when walking up and down the street and you see them on the corner, you're like, oh, let me lock my door. No, no, no. When's the last time you even stopped and talked to some young, some young people? Like, hey, how y'all doing today? I'm going to the store. Y'all want some chips? You want me to get you something? You good? Y'all having a good day? How's school? That's what our communities are for. We are not to fear our young people. We are not to see them as disposable, but we are to love our black boys because we know that the enemy has an agenda against our young men. Can y'all see it? There's an agenda against them because even like Pharaoh's thinking, if they were to become strong, 
If they were to lean into their true potential, we're going to be in trouble. This system going to be in trouble. This world going to... If these little back boys really see who they are, oh, man, it's going to be a... So there is forces to make them disposable, to make us buy into this, and that's where we need a holy no. That's where we need a holy no. No, no. I see you, young king. No. I see the potential you have. No, you know what? Let's start a little mentor group. Let's start a little, y'all need dinner sometimes? Come on. This is things that we can do to cultivate our holy no. So I love these midwives. They, 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 they are some real ones. Even in the, force of, in, in the face of empire, they said, nah, king, I don't know what you're talking about. You know that t-shirt, nah. They said, nah. Nah, we ain't doing that. Nah, 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 we fear God. We ain't about to be killing our own, no. All right, second, the second um, person I want to highlight in the scripture is Jochebed. You might not even know what name this is, but this Jochebed is Moses' mother's name. And I'm, part, I'm picking up at, uh, this is chapter 2, verse 1. It says, now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could no longer hide, when she could no longer hide him, when she could hide him no longer, she got a pap- papyrus basket for him, plastered it with put to men and pitch, she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds in the bank of the river. Oh, Jacobin. This woman, I feel like we don't highlight her enough. Her name is given in other pa- in passages in Hebrew and in Numbers. We find out what her real name is. But this is Moses' mama. First of all, ma'am, how did you hide a baby for three months? I need to know. How did you keep them quiet, sis? Because obviously my skills are not on par. Because I don't know how you did that, sis. Because how? She hid that baby for three months. She looked at him and said, nah. This is a fine baby. She saw purpose in him. She saw something in like, oh, no, 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 no. I know what the king said. I hear what the government is saying. I hear what officials are saying. I hear the decree and I hear the thing, but nah. There was a holy no inside of her that said, no, we're not going to do this. Now, just imagine this. And any moms or aunties or people that have been around babies, can you imagine the wherewithal, the fortitude it took for her to place her three-month-old baby, make a makeshift um, basket for him with, she look, look at the care she put in, she waterproofed it, she made sure it was right. I could see her putting in the, the blankets and, okay, we're going to do this and maybe I'll put in his favorite bread or maybe I'll, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to put him in the hands of God. Can you imagine a mama having to put a three-month-old baby into the Nile River, which is known for all types of alligators, right? Is it alligators that are there? Crocodiles. There it is. There are crocodiles in the Nile. There are all kind of wild animals. Let's just talk about the water. It's a river. It could just turn over at any time. Anything can happen. And here we see Jacobin placing her precious baby into this basket and letting him go. It's a whole word. It's a whole word about a holy no. I'm going to do everything possible for you to live, little one, but then I got to turn you over into the providence of God. This is a good word for any parent in the room. You can do everything you can for our babies. We're going to teach you. We're going to feed you. We're going to love you. We're going to try to show you the way. And then I got to put you into said basket and all the hurts, the harms, the dangers that are in this world. And I'm going to have to put you into the hands of God. I got to release you into the providence of God. I got to trust you. I got to trust God with you, baby. I got to let you go. I got to let you go. This is a good word for parents who we we spend too much time overextending our help. 
We, we help too long. We help too far. We're in, we're in all the things. We a helicopter parent at this point. We are in every situation, every season that happens with our kids. And sometimes we got to let them go. This going to free some parents out there. She had to have a holy no to say, no, I'm going to do all I can to raise this baby, no matter what the government is saying, no matter what the culture is saying. I'm going to do all I can, and then I'm going to put you into the hands of God. I love Jacobin. The third woman I want to talk about in this same chapter. Look, this is a whole roll call of mighty women. Jochebed. Now I want to talk about Pharaoh's daughter. Now this is my girl right here. All right, so this is Exodus 2, verse 4. It says, we're going to get to Miriam. Miriam was his sister. His sister, Moses, stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said, yes. So the, one, so the girl went, called the mother's child, the child's mother, who was our girl, Jochebed. Verse 9, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child, nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. Look at God. So the woman took the child and nursed it. And when the child grew up, she brought him the Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. What an incredible story. I want to talk about the Pharaoh's daughter's holy no. I love this girl because sometimes you got to have a holy no towards your own family members. Towards your own, come on, anybody with me? Towards your own kind, your own people. You got to develop a holy no. She said, I don't care what my dad said. Wrong is wrong and right is right. Can you imagine how ornery? I love this girl. Her dad made a whole, kill them all. That's what he said. Any Hebrew kid, she saw this little baby and took pity on him. Had come back, saw him crying, looking just all just floating down the river, and she said, "I don't care what this baby." Can you imagine little Moses at the palace, the only Hebrew boy walking around in the face? She holding him with her dad, like, "Hi, dad." <laughs> Me and my son will be over here on the other side of the palace. Can you imagine the wherewithal, the fortitude it took for her to stand in the face of her own dad and said, "I don't care what you decreed." This baby going to live. This is mine. It's a holy no. A holy no. And then my last girl I want to talk about is Miriam. Miriam, Moses' sister, who, had the, who was both bold and wise. I love it, but what I love about Miriam, she just, she just followed along. She didn't just leave him. You know, I don't even know if her mom told her to do this. She saw the mom let him go. Mom probably couldn't take it. I just, I, I can't bear to watch. She's like, I got you, mom. She just followed it. All oh, around, oh, where's he at now? Okay, I still see him. Still got my eyes on him. Yeah, on, There's something about having, yes, a big sister to have your back. There's something about somebody in your family or in your life or in your community who's just going to look out for you. She said, I'm going to look out for my brother. Come on, sisters, there's a lot of us. We need to look out for our brothers. We need to look out for the people in our community. We need to not talk down on them all the time, but let's have some things where we lifting up our brothers. Amen? They all can't be dog. We got to talk them into the kingdom. We got to talk affirmations to them. She said, I got a holy no because she went against all social protocol. I'm sure there was things you weren't supposed to just walk up to Pharaoh's daughter. 
You wasn't supposed to do that. And you a Hebrew girl, she was, but she had boldness in the face of empire to be like, hey, 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 I see you guys. Would you like for me to get a nurse for him? Come on, thinking on the fly. That baby was thinking. To be holy, that I will give you the what to do and what time and what place and what to say when you have compassion on people. She just sat, she just sat and watched how things played out. We can learn from Miriam. Sometimes you need to sit and watch how things play out. She wasn't swimming in the river with them. She didn't get a floaty. She didn't make her a basket too and was, no. She walked alongside and watched how it was going to play out. How many things do you need to take your hands off of and just watch it play out? Some people don't even deserve your I told you so. (laughs) They don't even deserve that because you surely did and they didn't listen. So what you going to do? Watch it play out. Watch it play out. Let God, sometimes you got to make room for God to work. Yeah. We be so involved in things. God can't be like, if you would just get out the way, I can let them feel the, what they're supposed to feel so that they can get to the thing. But you all in the way blocking the things and move. Go sit down somewhere. Miriam, I love this girl. She watched it play out. These are four women that we should uplift. I don't know, I don't, I don't remember hearing sermons particularly about these four women that we should uplift, that we should learn from. Because what is our takeaways? What are our takeaways? The takeaway is, number one, we all need a personal holy no. We need a personal holy no. You need one for yourself. Now, that's what I, um, I am clarifying. Not your job, no. But your personal, your own no. I love that Titus says, for the grace of God appears and offers salvation to all people. And what does it do? The grace of God teaches us to say no. Come on. Y'all can write that verse down. That's a good one. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, to live self-controlled so we can stay out of people's business, to be upright, godly lives in this present age. The God gives us the grace. You might be like, I don't know how I'm going to say no. That's people in my life. I don't know how. God will give you the grace to say no. My friend Shannon, who's watching me, sent me such a great devotional. And uh, in it, it said, are you in a pattern of always saying yes? Are you afraid of letting others down? Sometimes saying yes feels really good until it doesn't. When we long to say no, we crave for moments of peace or a commitment-free week. Constantly saying yes leads to exhaustion and our less than best, best selves. Are you running ragged because you're trying to please everybody? You need to be, are, you, are, are more people benefiting from your yes than you? And then I want to speak specifically to black women. For black women, saying no is an act of self-love. We got to really internalize that, black women. Us saying no is an act of self-love because if we let us, everybody will let us play the strong black woman role and we will hold everybody and everything at every job site, at every home. We will hold it all. Black women, we hold it all together, baby. And people will be glad to let you play that role. Yes, oh, she got it. She know what to do. Just ask her. No, 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 no. Sometimes us saying no is a form of self-love. No, I'm not able. If you ever want to get a a good read after this, I want you to look up, go to Google. Google polite ways to say no. It's hilarious. (laughs) Google it after. I didn't have time to go through it all because it's great. But if you need a little help, on how to say no as a complete sentence without reason or explanation, without having to add a caveat to it, please Google polite ways to say no. It's, it's really great. It's, I won't even get into it. Okay, second thing. We, not only do we need a personal no, a personal holy no, we need a societal holy no. It's a societal holy no. 
Romans 12, 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are not going to let this world cookie cutter us. We need to develop a holy no towards empire. I say it again. We need to develop a holy no towards empire. It is our job to resist and say no's, no to the ways in which colonization, Western thinking, and white supremacy has tried to form us. We have been formed in unintentionally in this country to think a certain way, to act a certain way, and we have to develop a no against it. Are y'all with me? White supremacy culture shows up oftentimes as perfectionism, a sense of urgency, quantity over quality, power hoarding, individualism, a right to comfort. That's just to name a few. We got to develop a holy no towards that. Because a lot of times we don't realize the Bible was written for us, but it wasn't necessarily written to us. I'll explain. The Bible was written for us, but not necessarily to us. Because we were formed in a Western way of thinking. The Bible is actually written in an Eastern form of thinking. We think different in the West as, than, as opposed to the East. The East is the, you know, Palestine, the Middle East, all these things. We have a different way of thinking. Western thinking is factual based. It's a, it's a mindset about logic, reasoning, explanation, science. Anybody familiar with these things? Eastern mindset is about purpose. It's about spirit, the spiritual. It's about honor, respect, family. We have to realize in the West that our way of thinking is not the only way of thinking. I don't think that's taught to us enough. There's other ways of people, the ways other people think. And we can't just say like, well, it's because it's us. We're America. That's, we're right. We have to say no. Y'all hear me? Y'all tracking with me? Say no. Develop a holy no. And you know what the opposite of empire is? It's community. The opposite of empire is community. That's why we are imploring you, get in community. Come be with us. Help us lead some kids. Help us greet some people at the door. Help us get some, sing, do some, get into community. Because that's how you oppose empire. Here's my last point. We all need a spiritual no. We all need to develop a spiritual, holy no. The Bible says in James 4 and 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This is my last point. We have to develop a holy no against the enemy who is the devil. We have a spiritual enemy. And it's so funny how we give more (laughs) no's to God than we give to the devil. We give more no's to God. Hey, can you help? No. Can you give the, no. Can you come to prayer? No. Can you come to, no. But we saying yes to the devil. Yeah, what's going on over here, right? It's time for us to develop a spiritual holy no against the enemy of our souls. You know, every thought that you think, you don't have to hold it. (laughs) Do you know you can actually resist a thought that comes into your mind? You know, the one that tells you that you can't do it, that you're a failure, you're you're an imposter. You know that voice. Y'all, we all got that voice, the one that tells you you can't do it. Why even try? You're a failure. Nobody needs you here. Y'all know that voice. You know you don't have to hold, y'all know that? You don't have to, you can actually resist it. Say, oh no, I'm not receiving that. Actually, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Oh, actually, no devil, I have been formed by God. Actually, I have a purpose and a plan. Actually, God loves me. Oh yeah, I did do that, but you know what? The blood of Jesus covered it. Y'all better, we gotta start talking back to the enemy. We just don't let the enemy consume our minds and we just consume every thought. This is how we develop a holy no. No. No, enemy. No, devil. No, you cannot have my mind. You cannot have my heart. You cannot have my joy. 
You can't have my peace, not today. You ain't gonna do it today. Oh no, I'm gonna hold on to it today. We have to develop a no against the enemy. The last thing I'll say for our reflection, I only got one reflection, and it's real simple. <laughs> Where in your life do you need to actually practice? We talking about practice? Practice. We talking about practice? Practice. You got to practice. Holy no. You don't just come to church and pray for it like, got it. No. Every day. I'm going to practice a holy no, personally, societally, and against the enemy of my, of my soul, the enemy of my peace. Every day, I need mean, think about a place in your life where you're like, no, that's it. No, this is where I draw the line. No, this is not, I, I'm, I can't let you talk to me like that no more. I can't let you treat me like this no more. I'm developing a holy no. No, actually, I can't make it every time you call me. Matter of fact, every time you call me, I can't pick up the phone for you every time. No, I'm developing a holy note. No, you're not going to spend, take an hour of my time talking about your day. You don't even ask me about my day. I'm developing a holy note inside my spirit. No, you can't. I, I don't have no more money to give you. I can't get you borrow no more money. Actually, I need you to get onto a budgeting program because I am developing a holy note. And you will find you will be so free. And guess what? Some people are going to be mad at you. It's okay. They're going to get over it. I promise you. I promise because when people can't, um, can, they can't capitalize on your services anymore, they get mad. But it's time for us to start weaning some folks. Amen? Hey, you're going to have to find another source. I will pray for you. I got you. Praying. Prayer hands. So let's stand. We're just going to close with a prayer. That God will fill us with a new holy boldness. Amen. God, fill us with a holy boldness. God, we need you. Come on, if this is your word, you could just lift your hands or just hold your hands out as a sign to say, God, this is, I receive this and I need this in my life. God, I need to develop a holy note. There are areas that you are inviting me into rest. You are inviting me into peace. You are inviting me into joy, but I have felt compelled and obligated to people. I, I didn't want them to think I was going to let them down. I didn't want them to talk about me. I didn't want them to say I'm stuck up or I'm doing too much. But God, I just pray that you would fill us with the boldness that you gave these four women in this text. God, that we will say no to empire, that we will say no when people try to take what belongs to us, that we will ultimately give you our yes. God, let our yeses to you outweigh anything else. God, we pray that you would give us the grace to say no. Because it's a grace. Give us wisdom. Who to help. When to help. How to help. And God, let us stand on what we say. If we say it, oh God, let us stand on it and back us up with your favor. Lord, we're praying for our family members. We're praying for those who are in relationship with us who may not understand this concept, but Lord, that you would just bless them with their own source, <laughs> which is you. We cannot be the savior. We cannot be the ones that help everybody. God, we just thank you for this invitation this invitation of a holy no. God, help us to practice it. Help us to see your hand on us as we release things into that river, just as Jacobet released her baby into that river. God, we release our lives. We release our loved ones. We release our finances. We release problems into your hand knowing that you're well able to take care of everyone and everything because you love the people we are concerned about even more than we do. So we release it into your hands. Thank you, God, for a holy no. Thank you that you're giving us wisdom. Thank you for boldness. Thank you, oh God, that there are some Moseses out there that need to be saved. Thank you, oh God that you're going to help us. Thank you that you are our strength and you are our joy. Thank you, oh God. 
We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Come on, if you got a holy no, I want you to turn to somebody and tell them no. Tell somebody no. You come on, we're gonna start practicing. Say no, period. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, um, no. No, I'm not able. I decline. God bless you. I'm gonna turn.